will change in the future when they when they're able to provide a, a pre-built where you could be able to build Oscar once and then never have to do it again. Um, and there's also going to be some lag in places where when you're running a complex function for the first time, it's going to be invoking Julia's just-in-time compiler, and it will actually spend much more time compiling the code, and they spend much more time compiling the code than actually running it. And that can give you the misleading interpret, you know, impression that it's slow. But in fact, Julia is, as we'll see, is crazy fast, because the benefit of that compiling is it's basically turning it into C code, you know, not, not literally into C code, but something that's interacting with the LLVM, which all C compilers produce output to, um, which can make it blindingly fast, um, but only after it's been compiled. So for example, when you go to compute the class number of, say, Q adjoin square root of minus three, it might take five or 10 seconds. And you're like, wait, how could it possibly take five or 10 seconds to do that? But then when you go to compute the class group of a much more complicated number field, it will be very fast. And that's because when you asked it to compute the first class group, it spent the time to compile all the code it's going to call whenever it is asked to compute a class group. So just a word of warning, I don't want people to get the wrong impression about Oscar, but I do think it's still at the early stages. I'm not necessarily personally ready to switch over and doing, start doing all my research in Oscar. I'd, I'd like to wait till it's a little more mature, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to let you know that it's a thing that's out there that is, exi exists and potentially could be very promising. Okay. The other key tool that we're going to be using and, and I want to introduce to you um, for both because I think it's independent in its own right, but also because it's a great source of computational examples, is the L functions and modular forms database. Um, so this is an online database of mathematical, mathematical objects, including number fields, elliptic curves, modular forms, and many other things that number theorists are interested in. Um, I, I guess the grand vision of the LMFDB is, is our goal is to catalog all the objects we can that lie on either side of the Langlands correspondence, um, automorphic forms on one side and sort of algebraic geometric objects on the other, the most canonical example being elliptic curves and modular forms that are related via their L functions. But as I said, my goal this week is not to teach you any mathematics, so I'm going to say nothing more about uh, all of the fascinating <laughs> mathematics that, that goes, on, goes on in it, but we're instead going to use the LMFDB as a source of coding examples, because if you were to come to me and say, how do I create an elliptic curve in each of these four systems, the shortest answer I can give you is go to the homepage of your favorite elliptic curve on the LMFDB and just click to get the code snippet that will create that particular elliptic curve in your favorite computer algebra system. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we are in the LMFDB. Now those of you who are familiar with the LMFDB are probably saying, wait a second, that doesn't look like the LMFDB I know and love. And that's, that's true. This is a, a special uh, version of the LMFDB that I've set up uh, specifically for um, this course. It has both uh, a preview of some components that are coming soon to the LMFDB. And in addition, I've added, what I've done is I've added in code snippets for Oscar to, to all of the uh, uh, number, number theory objects that we're gonna be focusing on this week. So in, in this version of the LMFDB, you'll, you will see Oscar code snippets for every number field and every elliptic curve and every abstract group and a number of other, and transitive group and a number of other objects. And that will be useful to us, um, but it may take some time before this is actually available in the LMFDB, but fear not, I'll keep this server up and running indefinitely. This is running on purple.lmfdb.xyz. So you can mentally think of this as the purple LMFDB, and I've sort of added a little purple hue to the uh, Lucent conference announcement photo. I should give credit that image there was created by David Lowry Duda, who in his work on visualizing modular forms, who is uh, here with us in the audience. I hope he doesn't mind that I change the color, color scheme a bit. Um, just to match the theme. Okay, so let's um, real quick check time check. Okay, we're right on schedule. So let's get started. Um, so I know I said every every uh, number theory talk and every demonstration should start with an elliptic curve, but let's start with number fields first. Because um, in my survey, the number fields were the number one thing that everybody said they were familiar with, or the, the most, not everybody, but the vast majority of people said they were familiar with. Um, so here we are on the number fields page. I'm gonna 
So that I've tried to blow the screen up as much as I can and still fit things on it, but it's a little bit crowded. Um, one thing I'm going to do is just hide the left menu while I'm working on it, get, you know, get stuff that we don't need out of our way so we can just focus on what we're interested in. And so this is... Uh, the front page for the number field database, which contains, as you can see on the top, something like 21 million number fields of degree up to 47. Um, if you wanted to know exactly which, there are a lot more number fields of degree up to 47 than 21 million. Of course, there's infinitely many. If you wanted to know which subset is actually in the LMFDB, you could go look at the, um, excuse me, the completeness of the data page, completeness of the data page, which every section in the LMFDB has, where you can um, see a list of all the number fields and all the areas and all the boxes in which the number, the, uh, L number field database in the LMFDB is is known to be complete. Okay, but it has a lot of other number fields as well. Basically, anytime we encounter a number theoretic object that has a number field associated to it that we'd like to be able to reference, we add it to the LMFDB. Okay, let's go back here. So it can be a little intimidating when you first meet the LMFTB to be confronted with all of these search boxes. I mean, this is like being at a restaurant with a menu that's, you know, 100 pages long. And you, you, you ask, you, you really just want to ask the server, what do you recommend? And here, what you can do, even if you might not have the server and LMFTB experts standing next to you, the one thing you can always do is just say, I don't know, give me a random number field. And so you can click on the random number field, and there's a decent chance you'll get a number field of degree six, because we have a lot of those in the LMFDB. Um, but you may get a higher degree or a lower degree number field. Um, so what do we have on this page? So this is our random number field of degree six. You see a defining polynomial for it. You see various invariants like its degree signature. That's the number of real and complex places. It's discriminant, which primes ramify uh, an integral basis for its ring of integers. Um, there's sort of a, in the, in the upper right-hand corner, there's what we call a properties box, which summarizes some of them, sort of the most critical or well-known invariants, things like its class group, its Gawa group, things you might want to just be able to find at a glance. This is like the little, uh, what uh, John Voigt likes to tall, call the Lady Gaga box, which is sort of a reference to Lady Gaga's Wikipedia page. For any, in any famous person's Wikipedia page, there's a little box, data box up on in the right-hand corner. The same thing's true for famous number fields like this one. Um, Okay, and most of the number data pages in the LMFDB, we try to start with sort of the most critical or the information we think is likely to be of interest to the most people at the top. And then as you scroll down the page, you'll get to more and more specialized information. Here, we're still, I would say, still sort of in the, in the portion of the page where a lot of people are going to be interested. Here we can see the class group and the class number. Well, this is a new, new thing, data that's being added to the LMFDB. I, get, I can see that in this case, it hasn't been, we haven't gotten to this field yet. Um, we're trying to identify where wherever we can, which fields are monogenic, what the index of those fields are, um, information about the class group, and then information about the unit group, what its rank is, torsion generator, fundamental units, and the regulator. And then we have the class number formula where you can see the, all of these invariants plugged together. On the left-hand side, we have the, um, the residue at S equals 1 of the Dedekind zeta function, the L function. On the right-hand side, we have this well-known combination of number field invariants. And, but in the LMFDB, you can see what exactly the value of all those invariants are for your favorite number field. And I could then scroll down further and see information about the Galois group, intermediate fields, fields that related to it, um, Frobenius cycle types, and even the local algebra at ramified prime. So if I looked at, uh, if I tensor with QP and look at what, the, what is the QP algebra I get um, for each ramified prime, this information is down here and there's even links into the uh, database of uh, uh, piatic fields. But the part of this page I want to focus on is actually in the upper right hand corner. Um, the first thing I'll mention is this little eyeball icon here. I'm not sure if that's obviously an eyeball, but if you click on it, it does something very cool, which is it turns many of the things in, the pa in this page that you might want to cut and paste into your favorite computer algebra system into something that you can easily copy. In fact, you can just click this button and it's now copied to your clipboard and you can go paste it wherever you like. Okay, this is great because even if there's not a specific code snippet, which we'll get into the code snips in a minute, you could, like, if you wanted to go play with this number field in Mathematica, you could just use that copy button to paste the, the polynomial into Mathematica. And similarly for things like the, you know, the basis for the ring of integers and other sort of complicated looking things. But let's turn that off. 
The other thing it has is it has what we call code snippets or commands for some number of computer algebra systems. For the number of fields and elliptic curves, there will be four. This is exactly the four that I said we're going to look at this week. So if I click on the magma button, I immediately pops up uh, next to sort of every invariant on this page that magma has uh, sort of a built-in command, command for computing. It gives you the code to compute it. So here's how you would create this number field in magma. You would execute this code snippet. Here's how you could get that, the defining polynomial back once you'd create it. Here's how to get the degree, signature, ring of integers. Notice, this is you know sort of a, a word of warning to people who haven't used magma before. When you ask magma for the discriminant of a number field, it doesn't actually give you the discriminant of the number field. It gives you the discriminant of the defining polynomial, which occasionally is the same as the discriminant of the number field, but with probability one will not be the same. Um, you really want to take the uh, discriminant of the ring of integers. And if we scroll down here to... The class number formula, this is a new feature that's only available right now on the purple version of the LMFDB. You'll see a code snippet that tells you that a self-contained code snippet that will let you compute all of the invariants in the analytic class number formula. Um, so let's go ahead and try that out. <clears throat> so if I wanted to, I can just you know, take my mouse and actually I should put a, um, we should put a copy button on here that I haven't done that yet. And click Control C. And now I will go back here to my notebook server. So this is the interface that all of you, what I'm looking at now is an interface that all of you have access to if you log into our notebook server at PCMI2022.org. And I'm going to go to, not that one, I want the Magma one. I'm going to go to a notebook that I've created with the Magma kernel. Actually, maybe I'll even show you how to create the notebook. I could just click the plus sign to access the launcher, and I could click the Magma button. And it's created a new, a new notebook, initially named Untitled, but I could go change the name if I want to using the, the file menu. I'm not going to bother doing that now, because I want to get to the code example. I just use Control-V to paste the code in, and now I'm going to press uh, Shift-Enter to run it. And boom, it went and computed all of these invariants, the, the discriminant, unit group, information, class group, signature, regulator, um, torsion, cardinality of the torsion subgroup of the unit group, and the class number, and it evaluated all this. So this should be equal to the left-hand side of, of the, sorry, the residue of the, <clears throat> at s equals one of the Dedekind zeta function, and we could go back to the LMFTB and, and see this starts out 0 0.27849. Let's see if Magma says the same thing, 0 0.27849. But the thing I want you to notice is you get a lot more digits here. And in fact, you could get as many digits as you want. I could change the precision in Magma and tell it to compute as many digits of this special value as I wish and get more. So if there's ever a situation where there's information in the LMFDB that just isn't quite as much information as you need, these code snippets will give you an easy way to compute more. Okay. Um, let's, whoops, I didn't mean to do that, sorry. Let's go back here. Let's look at some of the other code snippets that are available to us. I could click Oscar and see the equivalent code in Oscar for computing all of these things. Um, and again, down here, I have a similar uh, code snippet for the analytic class number formula that I could run in Oscar. Let's go ahead and try that. Um, and here I'm going to find out if I ran this soup. Let me stay there before or not. Let's go here. Ah, yes. Yeah, so this is going to take time. So I'm going to just paste it. Oop. And we'll go ahead and get, let it run. And while we're doing that, we'll go back and look at another code snippet. Let's go look at Perry GP. You'll notice the Perry GP code snippet is a little shorter. This is sort of one of the, the pluses and minuses of GP. It's very succinct, which can make it a little bit opaque, but it also can be convenient. Um, let's go to my version one GP. Go ahead and run the code here. And it spits out the special value, and you might say, oh wait, that's not as much precision as magma. Magma must be better. Well, no. Just go and say, I don't know, I want a thousand digits of precision. Yeah, okay. Um, and then last but not least, we'll go to Sage Math and look at its, let it compute the analytic class number formula. And over here, and I'll paste this in. Oop, wrong one. 
Yes, and they all, I don't know if all the digits are correct, but they all start out at 0.278, so that's reassuring. And this also gives us some confidence that, um, that the uh, data in the LMFDB is hopefully correct. The fact that we're getting the same answer in these four very different computer algebra systems that were implemented by different groups of people by different, at different times, in many cases using very different algorithms, the fact that they're all giving the same answer should be reassuring to us. And this is something that we do very often in constructing the LMFDB. In particular, we did this when we, when we were building the modular forms database. We ran all of the computations in three different computer algebra systems and compared the results. And guess what? We found bugs in all three computer algebra systems. Okay, you sh and, and that shouldn't that shouldn't worry you. I mean, I think Joe made a comment earlier today. You know, that's math. There are there will be typos. You know, that's software. There will be bugs. All software has bugs. Okay, um, which is why it's useful. That that's another reason why a, a, a diverse, heterogeneous environment of computer algebra systems is a good thing. So don't ask me. You know, I I don't care. I don't want to hear about all these different systems. Just tell me what's the best one, the one that I should use. And my answer is, you know, I'm not going to answer that question. Because that would be a, a bad. It would be a bad world to live in where there was only one. Okay. All right. Let's um, hop over to the. Um, how do I get back here? There we go. So here's our number field page. Let's go take a look at. Uh, maybe it'd be worth mentioning because you'll need this when you do the scavenger hunt during the problem session. Um, to show you a few things that you can do if you don't want to go to a random number field, maybe you want to search for a particular number field. So I just clicked to list all the fields, and well, there's 21 million of them, it's not going to list all of them. It's just going to list the first 50. And you might wonder what order, well, there is a, a well-defined order in the case of the number of fields, it's ordering them by label, which is starting with their discriminant, uh, the degree first and then discriminant. You might think that this a table looks kind of, um, you know, I'm not showing as much information as I might like to see. Maybe I want to know which of these fields are monogenic, or maybe I want to know what their Galois groups are, or maybe I want to know how many ramified primes they have, or what their unit group rank or regulator. Um, you know, and you can go nuts here. And this is a common feature to all of the um, LMFDB pages. You have a columns to display um, selector that will let you expand and, and also contract. Maybe there's something in here that is just annoying to you, so you want to get rid of it. Okay. Um, you can also change the sort order. So maybe I want to sort fields. Yeah, probably not a good idea to do this for all of the fields in the database. Let's do this. Um, so I don't know, maybe we'll take the fields from oh, absolute discriminant 10,000. <clears> How many are there? Well, there's at least 1,000. I can click the button. Okay, there's nine, that's a perfectly reasonable thing to sort. Let's uh, sort by class number, say. And I need to do search again to resort. Okay. And so, yes, among the number of fields of absolute discriminant up to 10,000 that are in the LMFDB, um, this particular quadratic field wins. It has a class group of uh, 100, so order 139. Okay. You can also sort them in, in the reverse order. Um, maybe I want to sort them by ramified primes. And I'm not sure why the ramified prime count is not displaying, so let's not do that. Um, I could also short, sort by signature if I wished. Okay. Um, anyway, I just wanted to make you aware that those things are available to you. Let's go hop over to um, elliptic curves now. So there's more to see there. Let's go here and hide the menu. And here again, let's just take our chances, and also you don't even need to click on this button, you could click on this, oh, maybe it's worth visiting here. If you didn't want to get a random elliptic curve, maybe you'd like to actually go look at an interesting elliptic curve. Well, we have a list of interesting elliptic curves, or at least things that we think are interesting, although we're all, we always welcome contributions. So if there's an elliptic curve or a number field you think is interesting that we haven't marked, please let us know. We can add it all to it, but you can see there are lots of different uh, interesting elliptic curves. Quotient of the freak McBeath curve, let's go, frick, frick of McBeath curve, let's go look at that one. Okay. Okay, so here's this elliptic curve. We have its um, minimal virus stress equation. Actually, I want to look at a different one. Let's go, maybe this one. Great. 
one thing I wanted to note here is that if you are used to thinking of your elliptic curves in the form y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b, and you look at these elliptic curve over q pages, they're very, they very rarely will have a model of that form because we want to use a minimal Weierstrass model that has good reduction at all the primes we could possibly have. Um, but if you want to see the uh, form that might be more familiar to you can just click simplify to switch the form of the elliptic curve and some of the data you can see on this page uh, is information about its mortal bay group uh, uh, mortal bay height um, we also have information on the faulting site and the serif faulting site uh, integral points known in, uh, or these are all provably complete so these are integral points on the curve BS, various BSD invariants, the BSD formula with both sides, uh, values on both sides, hopefully these, these match. But if you find an LMFD page, LMFDB page where they don't, maybe you found a, a counterexample. Um, you can find, you could also jump over and check out the modular form that's associated with this elliptic curve over Q. And here you can see information about the uh, modular form. You could, we could also jump in and look at the L function that this modular form and this isogeny class of elliptic curves share. And here on the L function page, you can look at the L function either in its arithmetic normalization, which is probably more familiar to you if you're of an algebraic um, bent. But if you're an analytic number theorist, you probably prefer to see it this way, um, where the, <clears throat> excuse me, where the axis of symmetry is at one half. And we can, for on each L function, we can get information about the zeros, um, the Hardy, plot of the Hardy Z function. Um, again, I'm not going to spend time on these. I just want to show you what's out there. But now let's jump back here and see how we could create this elliptic curve in our favorite computer algebra system. So as before, if I click magma, I'm going to get little magma code snippets alongside each of these invariants that tell me how to compute it. <clears throat> and I can even go down here and check out the BSD formula and go and verify that in magma. So let's go and oop, keep doing the wrong one. Let's do this one. Let's go back to our little magma code snippet. So great. It says the analytic SHA should be one. We could check on and this this message here, which I was initially afraid was a, an error message, is not. It's an informational message telling us something that Magma did as it was computing um, information about uh, when as it was computing uh, the rank of the elliptic curve, the Morove rank. And if I go back to the number field page, hopefully it says analytic SHA is one. It does, which is good. Okay. I could also do the same thing in let's say let's do it in Sage now. I'm not going to go through all four systems, but maybe I'll show you two. And here again, I could copy this. Oop, keep doing that. Here we go. Um, and here, let's put in another cell below. And I should note, I put in, in these code snippets, there is an assert here. This is actually verifying the weak BSD. It's checking that the mortal A rank agrees with the analytic rank here. And it's computing analytic SHA by, you know, as a combination of all these uh, other invariants in the BSD formula, and Sage agrees analytic SHA should be one. Okay. Now, I should mention that in some cases we know exactly what the order of SHA is. So if you see this in parentheses exact next to the order of SHA, on the, let me um, get rid of the code snippets for a minute. Um, if you see this exact, it means that we actually know what the order of SHA is. But in many cases, it, you know, this can be difficult to compute, and it hasn't been computed exactly on all the elliptic curves in the LMFD, especially those with, with higher ranks. So in those cases, you'll see that it's rounded, and we're, we're computing the analytic order of Shaw and rounding the number. But if you believe uh, the BSD formula, then you should expect those two things to be the same. Um, okay, the last thing I want to show, and let's see how we're doing on time. Yep, better keep moving. Is a new section of the LMFDB, which will be, this will be on the production website very soon now. 